And finally, in rock mythology, roadies are the guys who audition post-concert babes for touring musicians. In reality, though, roadies generally work like dogs, are not what anyone would call overpaid, and are essential to the acts that employ them. Allison Stewart lends a sympathetic ear. I'm not really that roadie dependent. And I, I, depends on if to turn his cue cards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The lyrics that I can never remember, I, 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 I tape them on my monitor. And I really need somebody to go there and flip them over for the next song. And it's really great to have somebody who keeps your stuff tuned up, keeps things working. Whereas before we ever got involved with having a, a roadie, we did it all ourselves for years. I don't know how we did it. To have somebody do that is such a, a luxury. As an artist hits the stage and finds everything perfectly in its place, that's because all afternoon a special breed of individual known as the roadie has spent all his time tweaking and tuning, making sure the monitors are turned up to the 11. Always a lot of hard work, and sometimes for very little money. How much can a uh, starting out roadie expect to make? Well, if they're working for a band that's got any sort of um, tour support, probably about $300 a week. Plus, you should be able to get like, you know, 10 to $20 a day per diem, so you can sort of add that in. But it's really hard work. I mean, you make less money and you work much harder. Kenny has the technology, he has the know how. He's like low profile. Superman. If he wasn't there, what would happen? Sort of, uh, it's like the, the wheels sort of fall off. Who are your boy? Pavement, I work for. I just drifted into it like anything else, you know, I was in a band, played guitar, so I kind of knew, I understood how a stage works, you know, how bands work, and then somebody asks you to do it, and before you know it, they're saying, hey, we'll pay you for this, and sure. Not enough people interview roadies, too, so they love to do interviews. They give them best. Yeah. yeah. They also will tell you what's actually going on. They're not going to hide anything. They'll spill the beans. At least ours will. Is there such a thing as roadie training school, or is it just on-the-fly training? Uh, I wing it. Got to have strong, <laughs> strong arms. I, uh, I graduated from NYU in 92 and with a degree in philosophy, so that channeled me right into this line of work, I thought. When is your day starting? What does it start with? <laughs> Coffee and cigarettes about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. What is the biggest fallacy about being a roadie? That we get women. <laughs> we don't have any time. I like the black curse of a vacuum. Yes, we do. We travel with a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> a couple of the guys are, are usually barefoot, so uh. we make sure, you know, there's nothing on the, on the rugs. Ah, I've been with the Black Road since day one. They've grown. You know, we've all grown. But it's still the same concept. You know, we all love music, and that's why we're out here. One last note from the Rock and Roll Road. Hootie and the Blowfish fans at Sunday night show in Raleigh, North Carolina, got a surprise when REM bassist Mike Mills joined the band for an encore of...